And so before we get started, uh, let's go ahead and pray so we can dive right into what we have prepared for today. Father, in Jesus name, we are always grateful and we're certainly thankful to you for the privilege as well as the opportunity to share your word. Father, I invite your peace, your power and your presence not only to be brought to bear upon me, but upon the viewing audience. I pray, God, that you will think through my mind, that you will speak through my vocal cords. I pray, Lord, today that it be all of you and none of me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, praise God. Here we are, another day, another opportunity to hear what thus says the Lord. I... Um, my intentions were to finish on last Sunday, uh, last Sunday morning, and unfortunately I didn't. I wasn't in a hurry, as I mentioned to you, and so we're going to attempt to pick up where we left off at, and we're going to try to finish up on today. Again, let me warn you, I'm not in a hurry. Amen. Uh, and, uh, and so let's go ahead and um, uh, begin our Lesson for this morning. All right. In the book of Jeremiah, excuse, yeah, the book of Jeremiah, chapter number 10, verse 23. Well, by now, certainly your Bible ought to fall open <laughs> uh, in that particular place, because this is where uh, for the last five weeks uh, we have um, um, started at. And that is with Jeremiah, chapter 10, verse number 23. And we're going we're going to read it from the Amplified Translation, uh, of course. In my mind's eye, the Amplified Translation always brings it out uh, and, and place emphasis where uh, emphasis is needed. All right, so here we go. O oh Lord, please, Jeremiah, in the name of the people, I know that the determination of the way of man is not in himself. Notice the determination of the way of man is not is not in himself it is not in a man even in a strong man or in a man at his best on his best day <laughs> uh, to direct his own steps so jeremiah is making it clear to us that the way of man is not in himself amen and uh, and so you know, certainly um, uh, the sooner we realize that and, and allow God uh, to bring the direction, the leading that we need, the better off our lives, I believe, will be uh, as a whole. So now <clears throat> notice now he said that the determination of the way of man, you know, and of course, you know, uh, we can be some determined people. You know, when we want things our way or when we're attempting to do something, we can display some determination. But again, it doesn't matter whether you're strong or you at your best. It's not in you. Amen. But it's it's uh, the direction of the Lord is what we are after. Amen. All right. Now. So let's look uh, at. Um, uh, I want to go to Isaiah, but I want let's look at Proverbs chapter three. Uh, Leela, before we get to Proverbs, I mean, to, before we get to Isaiah 55. Proverbs chapter number three, I believe it's verse <coughs> five or six. <clears throat> From the King James translation. All right. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Verse six. In all thy ways. How many ways? In all thy ways. It, no, not just some of, but he said, in all thy ways, acknowledge him. Now, if we do that, watch this. He shall direct thy path. Amen. So if we acknowledge him, then God is promising us here that he would direct our path. Remember, the way of man is not in himself. Amen. So if we acknowledge him, and I believe 
the implication here is God wants us to get to the place. Listen to me, child of God, where we depend upon him, where we look to him. You know, and, and I believe that I don't have to go into some kind of dissertation or some kind of something deep to explain to you what I mean by that, because we know how it is when we depend upon other people, you know, to do our thinking for us, our praying for us. And certainly that's not right. But, you know, the extent that perhaps you have gone to and and what it amounted to was your dependency upon that person. Well, God wants us to depend upon him. You know, he wants us to realize what's not in us. Amen. And what's not in us, then he want us to lean to him. He want us to acknowledge him. Amen. So notice he said in all thy ways, he, he did. He's not talking about some of your ways. God is emphasizing this, this word. All is just not in here just to hold up the pages of the Bible or just to be saying something. But the, the implication here is that in all of your ways. All of your ways, acknowledge him and he that's a promise. Now, notice and he shall not might, but he shall direct thy path. Amen. All right. So now let's go to Isaiah 55 um, verses seven and eight. So we see while we're turning to Isaiah, we see here, child of God, that Jeremiah recognized that the way of man was not in himself or is not in himself. And what he's doing is showing us, listen, he's showing us a better way. Amen. As opposed to our way. Now, child of God, you know, <laughs> you know, the scripture says it's not in you. But now if you want to take it upon yourself, amen, uh, to, you know, to go about your own way of doing things. And, and of course, we know that that has, you know, for, for centuries have gotten us in trouble. You know, the Bible even said that 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 uh, there is a way <laughs> that seemed right unto a man. But the end thereof is death and destruction. See, so there is a way that seem right, seem right. It looks right. It smells right. It looks right. But the end thereof is death and destruction. I don't want death and destruction in my life. I don't have a problem in acknowledging God. Amen. So now let's look at Isaiah 55, verse 7. Notice what this verse says. Let the wicked forsake his way, his way. Let him forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return. Um, and I, I emphasized this word return on last week and I want to reemphasize it again. You cannot return from something unless you've gone there before. So notice he said, let him return. Unto the Lord. Now, this could just be me, but I believe what's happening here is that the wicked, listen, he said, let him forsake his way. Well, it was his way that led him away. So now the emphasis is let him forsake. Let him forsake his way and return unto the Lord. Amen. Now, if I'm going to forsake my way, that means I'm going to forget about my way. I'm going to forget about what I want to do and I'm going to return unto the Lord. Now, notice the scripture here says, and he, the Lord, will have mercy upon him. Well, God is not going to beat you up and bang you on the head and, you know, and punish you. But the emphasis is just return unto the Lord. Listen. And God will have mercy upon him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. So God will forgive us for anything. Amen. If we return and we come back to him, right? I mentioned on, on last uh, Sunday morning how that the scripture says, if we confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We serve a just God. We serve a God who will abundantly pardon. Amen. All right. Verse eight. <clears throat> notice God said, notice what God is saying here. Now he said, he's saying here that my thoughts are not your thoughts. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways. My ways said the Lord. 
So now God is, <clears throat> again, to me, he's upping the ante here. And, so, and, and he's, he's really trying to uh, arrest our attention to, as opposed to our way and his way. Amen. And I believe that if that was a battle, you know, that mankind has, that is doing things his way uh, as opposed to doing things God's way, then I believe that that's, that's a battle in and of itself. But there has to be a surrender, people of God. There has to be a place that we come to in our lives to where we totally, listen, where we totally surrender our will, our way, ourselves, unto God. Amen. For his will. Amen. <clears throat> and his purpose and plan for our lives. We need God to direct our steps. Amen. Now, so let's look, if you will, uh, at uh, Proverbs. Uh, let's see. 20. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. Proverbs chapter 20, verse 24. <clears throat> Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Now he's saying, now you can't understand your own way. Your goings is of the Lord. Then how, this is a question, how can a man then understand his own way? Amen. So now notice the scripture says, understand his own way. Well, that's what we want. We want to understand God's way as opposed to understanding our way. Amen. Now we're going to get into some things here that I believe that's going to be an eye opener for some. And of course, uh, maybe for many of you, this just going to be a time of just watering. But for many of you, it's going to be a time of planting. Amen. So, so notice he says man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his way? Let's look also at Psalms 37 and 23. Psalms 37 and 23. All right. The steps of a good man. Now, why would he emphasize good? <laughs> I, I, I believe that, in fact, other translators say the steps of the righteous or the steps of the just. So he's talking about people that are in right. Listen at me now. Right relationship with God. And there there is a, uh, a reason for this. And, I, and I'll bring it out. Uh, the steps of a good man are ordered. By the Lord. And he that is God delighteth in his way. Not notice the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. A good man. See, God is not going to. He can. And 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 of course, this 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 um, you, you can see it running ran, running all through the scripture. God can listen. He can order anyone's steps. But you see, it's a good man's steps that he orders. Why a good man? Because, see, our spirit man has to be right with God. Our heart has to be right with God. Amen. Our heart and our spirit, of course, is one and the same. Uh, but notice a good man. See, this is just not any man, but it's a good man. God orders our steps. Now, notice it said, and he delighteth in his way. Well, why is it that God delighteth in his way? Because he's following God's way or uh, because we're following God's way. See, child of God, it is very important that we know, that we understand, that we comprehend, that we can discern God's way. In other words, uh, his way. In fact, let me bring this out when I say God's way. Let me let's, let me let me emphasize something here. When the scripture speaks of God's ways, it's referring to much more than his actions or facts about his nature. His ways include, watch this, his manner, his motivation, his desires, his thoughts and purposes. Amen. One more time now. His manner, his motivation, 
his desire, his thoughts, and his purposes. And we're going to um, uh, place more emphasis on this word purposes, because at the end of the day, that's what it will come down to. See, <clears throat> I was thinking about this this morning. You know, God will never release his power apart from his purpose. He'll, he'll never, listen, release. And we need God to release his power. <laughs> Amen. Because we, we cannot place dependency upon our own ability. But notice now, notice what I said. God will never release his power apart from his purpose. So in other words, if I want to decide I want to just go off and do this or I want to accomplish that and I want to, you know, uh, uh, achieve certain things. And yet that's not God's direction for me. Then God will not release his power. Amen. In my life so that I can go off and do what I want to do. So the emphasis here is God will never release his power apart from his purpose. So once we can lock into God's purpose, uh, you know, in other words, what it is that God wants to do. And of course, all of this has to do with what we sense in our hearts. And when I say what we sense in our hearts, our hearts has to be pure. You know, in other words, I believe this is the direction of the Lord. You know, there are no arterial motives. There are no hidden agendas. I believe that this is the direction of the Lord. Amen. That's that's all, all we can do, because God is not going to send us no email, no registered letter or anything of that nature. <clears throat> so what we have to rely upon is our spirit making connection with the Holy Spirit and, and you and I moving out on what we believe that God is saying to us. So, again, God never releases his power apart from his purpose. So we need the purpose of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, one of the things that I have been saying uh, throughout, I know for the last three weeks, and uh, being that my intentions are to close uh, this, uh, to end rather this series, and that is we cannot, you know, I don't believe that I can overemphasize this. If I said it every few minutes, I believe that it, it was some, it's something that needs to be said. We cannot relate to God on the basis of our feelings or our senses. We can't do it. Now, I, I, and I say can't, you can attempt to, but what I'm saying is useless. No, we, we, listen, if we're going to relate to God, we're going to have to relate to him by faith. Amen. Because the Bible says, that God is a spirit. John 4, 24. God is a spirit. Did you hear what I said? God is a spirit. In fact, it goes on to say, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. But God is a spirit. So we cannot relate to God on the basis of our feelings. Hallelujah. Now, of course, you know, our spirit man, when it comes to comprehending or understanding God's ways, our spirit is the key. And what I mean by that is <clears throat> the Bible says um, that the spirit of man, this is Proverbs 20, 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. So it's through our spirit that God will lead God and he will direct our lives. So our spirit has to be in tune. Amen. To his spirit for us to, you know, to, to, to get the direction that we need or to move out on what we believe the Lord is saying to us. I also have been emphasizing to you that there are three things and I don't believe this is an, 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 an all inclusive list, but there are three things that, we must exemplify in our lives. In fact, it would not do us, you know, um, it would not uh, take away from, you know, our uh, exercise where spiritual things are concerned if we didn't dive into these areas every day. And that is we got to trust God. We got to obey God and we got to have faith in God. 
We got to trust God. We got to have faith. I mean, we got to obey God and we got to have faith in God. See, there is a constant, consistent exercise of these three areas in particular in our lives that has to be exercised. If we're going to relate to God, there has to be trust. If we're going to relate to God, we're going to have to be obedient, obedient in the sense of moving out on what I believe. If God tells you to do something, listen to me, child of God, if he tells you to do something, listen, and God will never tell us to do anything that's contrary to his word. Never, never, never tell us to do anything. So whatever God is leading us to do, amen, is in the word. You can find it in the scripture. Amen. The scripture will back it up. The scripture will validate it. So so trust in God, uh, uh, obedience to God and you and I having faith in God. See, this is how we move with God. <laughs> this is how you and I are able to move uh, in sync with God. And of course, uh, one of the things that I failed to emphasize from the beginning, and that is on today, we're talking about embracing God's way. Embracing God's way. Listen, child of God, we are going to have to embrace God's way. Now, to embrace means to welcome. That is with open arms. It means to accept or to support. Amen. So we're talking about embracing God's way as opposed to our own way. Now, um, we, we're not going to look at it, but we looked at a scripture on last week where the Bible says that God made known unto Moses his way. This is found in Psalms 103 and 7. He made known unto Moses uh, his ways and his acts or his works to the children of Israel. So don't tell me we cannot understand God's way. You know, child of God, that would be, that's, that wouldn't even make sense. Because I believe that each one of us are going to be held accountable, you know, for our actions and the things that we did, you know, here on earth, you know, in relation to, you know, God's way. And if I can't understand it, amen, then, uh, you know, then how can I be held accountable for, you know, something that I never understood? Amen. So so you can know or we can know God's way. Amen. Or we can know a uh, God's M.O. in terms of the way that he does things. Now, first of all, uh, let me say this. <clears throat> God never does anything apart from his word. Now, that is security for you and I <laughs> to know that there will never be any actions, nothing that will be said. Nothing, no, uh, will not be led in any direction. Listen, because God never does anything apart from his word, because God and his word are one. All right. Look at this. Listen to this. God never does anything apart from his love. Because he is love. <laughs> so everything God does is done in love. Amen. He never does anything apart from love. Amen. Now, here are some ways uh, that um, for those of us who earnestly want to know God's ways, these are some things you can look at for sure. Number one, love. Love. God is love, of course. Uh, the word. Number two. Number three, faith. Number four, the Holy Spirit. See, these are the ways that God operates. He operates through love. He operates through his word. He operates through and by faith. And certainly he moves and he operates by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank God for that. Glory to God. All right. Now, the more I understand God's ways, the better I can trust him. The more I understand God's ways. See, because child of God, let me tell you something. We live in a world where there's always people uh, that's going to try to undermine and discredit, you know, religion or Christianity or even God. Amen. But but when you know God 
and you know how he operates. For example, good example. If someone tells you, you know, that, you know, God had to, you know, he had to destroy this. He had to, you know, um, uh, God calls uh, this building to burn down because a bunch of sinners were in there or, you know, in other words, they are saying things to you. You know, that's not the way God operates. That is not the way God operates. So but now watch this. Suppose you didn't know that. If you did know that that was not God's way and someone said those things to you, you may buy into that. You may subscribe to that, you know, and thinking, you know what, <clears throat> uh, that would make sense for God to burn that place down because, you know, uh, was a bunch of sinners, you know, was up in there. That's not the way God operates, child of God. And these are some things that we got to we must, I should say, understand about God. He does not operate that way. Amen. All right. So now let's look. <clears throat> um, in fact, I, I ended with this scripture on last Sunday morning and I want to go back and visit. And that is Matthew 16 and 24. We're talking about embracing God's way. All right. Matthew 16 and 24. Embracing God's way. I know a lot of times, you know, God's way to us may be slow. <laughs> you know, it, it may, you know, seem to us, it, you know, it takes too long. Um, you know, and a lot of times, you know, when when we think that way, we tend to get ahead of God. Uh, you know, uh, but again, you know, we know in reality that God's way is the best way. Amen. Now we now we know that in reality, but we need to know it experientially. That God's way really is the best way. All right. <clears throat> Notice this scripture. Let's look at it in the King and the Amplified translation. That way we, we want to read both. All right. Notice what this verse says. Then Jesus said to his disciples. <laughs> Notice who he's talking to now. He said to his disciples. If anyone desires to be my disciple. Let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. Disregard, lose sight of, forget about himself and his own interests and take up his cross and follow me. Notice his cross. And I started to emphasize this on last week. And we know just the mention of the word cross um, is um, <clears throat> brings about, you know, agony, uh, discomfort. Amen. But notice everyone has a cross, <laughs> you know, no cross, no crown, <laughs> you know, so you're going to have to take up your cross. But now notice Jesus is saying here now, you must forget about yourself. You must disregard yourself. You must lose sight of and forget uh, and, and lose sight of and forget yourself and your own interests and take up his cross and follow me. Follow me simply means to cleave steadfastly to me. Conforming wholly to my examples in living. Conforming wholly to my examples of living. So God has a way of uh, that he desires for us to live. Amen. And it's outlined in the book. It's, it's outlined rather in the book, brother. Amen. He has already outlined how we are. For example, the scripture says, be holy for I am holy. So God expects for you and I to live a holy life. Amen. So notice he said, conforming wholly to my examples in living and if need be and dying also. Amen. So this is this is in a nutshell. Now, God is describing to us, you know, those who desire to come after him, those who desire to follow him. He's already laying out. Listen, he's already laying it out for us. These are things that we have to do. Now, child of God, and not only have to do, but these are some things that we listen, that we need to be working on. Amen. Because you're talking about forgetting your own self. See, this is the way we have operated prior to coming into the knowledge of Jesus. We did our own thing.